got a really exciting story to share with you today and honestly I just can't pass up the chance of making a video out of this. From the title and the thumbnail you can probably already tell what the story is going to be about but let's start with the context. So on Monday me and Jacob were in London to go to a gig. There's this band called TRC, I guess they're like a hardcore band and we've been listening to them for about four years. They were supposed to play a local festival in 2014. They had to pull out for some reason really last minute and we were really disappointed. Ever since then either we haven't been able to go to their shows or their shows have been cancelled for some reason, so it's just never worked out and we've never been to see them. Actually, Jacob went to see them once, but I think I might have been out of the country or something, so I'd never seen them. When I found out that they were playing a show at the Borderline, I was like, we've just got to go because otherwise we're never going to get to see them. It's kind of like our paths keep crossing, but we don't quite get to see each other kind of thing. So I was determined that we would go to this show. At the same time, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to go because I get very anxious about a lot of things and all my anxious thoughts were finding hundreds of excuses as to why not to go. Public transport for me is an ordeal and there are also a lot of little things that before an event my brain ticks and ticks and ticks and cannot stop worrying about. For example, I worry a lot about what to wear to a gig because I don't want to be cold before and after but I also do not want to be holding a coat inside and that's such a silly little thing but for some reason it really just gets to me somehow. So there are a lot of little things like that that were kind of making me convince myself not to go, but I wasn't listening. This was the Monday just gone, so we just had our second round of snow. It was still really cold, still snow outside, still like a lot of ice on the ground. That was another big thing that was convincing me not to go, but I took a coat with me and once we were in London, the snow was all gone. So we went up to London about lunchtime. We were planning on going to this vegan cafe, which had just opened because our friend Chris, who's an illustrator, had had some of his work framed in the cafe. So we we're gonna go along and be supportive friends. But when we were looking at the menu online, it didn't look like it was vegan. Most of the dishes had meat in, but it didn't kind of say like that it was fake meat. And there was also like egg and cheese. And I feel like if you're gonna go to a vegan cafe, it would probably advertise that it was fake meat and fake egg and fake cheese. So. We weren't completely sure on that, so we decided to go somewhere else. And we ended up going to somewhere I'd wanted to go to for so long, which is Temple of Satan, Satan? Depends how you say it, but it's a vegan chicken shop and it was so good. There's one in Hackney and there's one in Camden. We went to the Camden one and honestly, it's so good and pretty good price as well, especially for vegan food. So Jacob had like their classic chicken burger and I went for buffalo wings. I haven't really eaten much meat in my life. I have eaten meat for probably a grand total of about four years and in that time I'd never eaten a wing. I don't know what wings are like but it turns out buffalo wings are really spicy. <laughs> it was so spicy that I really struggled to eat it but it did taste good. I just, I'm not that great at coping with spicy food. They had other wings. They had like a barbecue one and like a normal one and they also had popcorn chicken so I think I'll try one of those next time. Or the burger because the burger was really nice. I've been joined by a penny so if you see a tail waving around it's not mine it's hers so after our food i think it was probably about half three and the doors for the gig were probably opening at half seven so we had a lot of time to kill we went to find a place to charge our phones and get coffee so we went to like a youth hostel cafe and then we decided to go to Leicester Square. We didn't really have any plans for Leicester Square. Eminem World makes me feel sick. I absolutely hate the smell and I just can't go in there. So we're not gonna do that. There's not really much to do in Chinatown anymore because the big kind of market shops closed. I think we wanted to go in a Lego shop and Jacob wanted to get Chipotle from down the road. So as you may know, Leicester Square is known for its cinemas. It's got a load of cinemas and loads of premieres happen there. When we got off um, the tube, there was a lot of crowds and there was kind of like um, a barrier up around one of the cinemas and I said that's probably a premiere and Jack was like no it's not just because there's a barrier it doesn't mean there's a premiere but I was right it was the European premiere for Ready Player One which is the new Steven Spielberg film it's about like virtual reality and I'd seen it advertised but it didn't seem like my thing I'm not really into kind of action things or adventure things I just like to stick to kind of real life and no fighting thank you as we arrived, the event was just starting, so like all the red carpety, pressy kind of stuff. At the time, we didn't know it was a film with such big names. We didn't know Steven Spielberg was the director. We didn't know Simon Pegg was in it, who's one of Jacob's favourites because he like really liked the Cornetto trilogy, like, like Shaun of the Dead and all that kind of stuff. But we were just being nosy because it's human nature to kind of wonder what's going on, especially when there's celebrities involved. You just want to know what's happening. Jacob is probably about six foot four, so he's pretty tall. I got him to stand on the wall, peek over, and see what was going on. And honestly, not much was going on, but I got up there too. There were a couple of other people up on the wall too, just trying to get a peek at what was going on. These two people came up to us who were dressed really smart and they started talking to Jacob. I thought they were trying to steal our place on the wall so I just kind of ignored them. They asked him if we'd seen Steven Spielberg yet and Jacob said no and then they asked him if it was just us two 
And Jacob said yes, and then we both kind of moved up because we thought they wanted to get up on the wall too and have a peek. And they were dressed really nicely, so it looked like they were kind of more into film than us. So they asked Jacob to get down off the wall and talk to them, and at this point I was like definitely ignoring them. These people are weird. This is London, you've got to be a bit on guard. When people like ask you to follow them, you probably shouldn't follow them. So Jacob got down off the wall, I stayed on the wall, just because I didn't really trust them and I didn't want to do what the stranger was telling me. But I was also kind of hunching down so I could hear what they were saying. The guy was asking Jacob if we wanted to go in and I thought he was just kind of making conversation like, well, you're interested in this as well. But he was like, oh, you can go in, I've got two tickets. And I was like, mm, this is dodgy, this is really dodgy, I'm not, I'm not getting involved. They said they were from the steakhouse next to the cinema and that they had two free tickets and we could have them. If you know Leicester Square, there's the big Burger King and then opposite that is the view, which was the cinema that the premiere was at. And then next to the view is this steakhouse. And while we were on the wall, actually, I said to Jacob that the people in Burger King and the people in the steakhouse who were upstairs had a really good idea because they were just sitting there eating their food with like a proper bird's eye view of what was going on on the red carpet, which was a blue carpet, but you know, I'm gonna call it a red carpet, okay? So Jacob started walking off and following these people into their steakhouse, which is dodgy because we don't know who they are. It's like bribing a child with candy. And also we're both vegetarians. I don't think I've ever even stepped foot in a steakhouse. I've never eaten a steak in my life. For some reason I was just like, they're gonna make us eat meat. I don't know why that was going through my head, but it was. I have now stepped foot in a steakhouse for a solid two minutes. We went in, the waitress at the door asked us if we were the lucky ones or if we were just customers. And then we got taken through to the back. The manager gave us these two tickets, which I have got one here. These are like properly high quality tickets. So proper thick card. He handed us the two tickets, we shook his hand, said thank you, and then he just took us to the entrance to the premiere. I was in a lot of shock because he'd chosen us out of all the people standing on the wall. I don't think we looked that enthusiastic, we were kind of just being nosy. I was grateful that he did choose us, um, but I was just mostly in shock and also confused because I thought we were going to see TRC. I thought we were going to a gig and I was like, we haven't seen TRC in four years of being together, but I think a surprise ticket to a film premiere is a rarer occurrence than a gig. So we went in, like you can't, you can't do this every day. Now considering we were supposed to be going to a gig, I had dressed appropriately. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I thought long and hard about like the most practical thing to wear that would make me the least anxious. And I decided on some old tatty shoes, which are like my gig shoes. They're these bright turquoise and a lot of holes in, a lot of, mud on them but I just don't care if they get trashed in a mosh pit. Then I was wearing black jeans, the band t-shirt, my university hoodie which I noticed later on had tomato soup stains down. I'm not one to care too much for my appearance anyway but this was like a level lower than my usual standard of casual clothing. And I was about to walk down a red carpet which was blue at a black tie event where Steven Spielberg was on the carpet at the same time as me in a hoodie with tomato soup down the front. I'm honestly surprised that they didn't stop me and say you cannot come in. <laughs> the bonus of me telling this story is you get to find out some juicy gossip about what happens at a red carpet, blue carpet event. I've watched film premieres and things like award shows on TV before and I also follow a lot of British YouTubers and I think if you follow any British YouTuber you also know that they get invited to a lot of premieres and post a lot of pictures of them on the red carpet so you kind of get a gist of what things are going on. But what I didn't realise is there's like two parts of the carpet. Important people in the film, celebrities and actual proper guests get driven in. They get dropped off at kind of the end of the carpet and that's where the sort of press area is. So all the cameras, all the press people are down that end. I guess they have their photo taken, maybe they do some like interview kind of questions. I'm not particularly sure because I was not in that section. The carpet's right in front of them but there's a barrier cutting it off. They go through the barrier and then they walk down the rest of the carpet which is where the kind of fans are at the side like hey sign my thing then there's a second entrance for the kind of normal people PR and press and like people in the industry I think that's where youtubers go in that's where I went in so just kind of everybody who isn't involved with the film directly that entrance leads straight onto the carpet so you've kind of got the press area the barrier and then the red carpet's here and you come on just after the barrier so you don't get to get into the actual celebi bit but they can go onto the carpet bit so you're still in the same area. Me and Jacob were both kind of in shock. I was absolutely mortified that I was wearing a hoodie and trainers and walking down a red carpet at a black tie event. So we both kind of just walked down the carpet really fast, not because we were scared, but just because we didn't really know what was going on. We hadn't really had time to process it. Steven Spielberg had already arrived and he was on the carpet. So we walked down the red carpet, which was blue, at the same time as him, but we didn't really take that in at that time because 
<laughs> we weren't expecting it. They had a DeLorean at the front because this movie is kind of full of loads of 80s pop culture references. We didn't really take that in either, which is such a shame because I love Back to the Future, so I would have loved to look at that in more detail. When we went into the cinema, and there were so many ushers. I know that it's partly for security and partly because important people are attending and they want to impress them. I work in CMB, so I work at events quite a lot, not like the standard of a premiere, but I was just in shock that they had so many staff. We would never have that many staff. So this is another thing I didn't realize about premieres is that the film is screened on multiple screens. So kind of depending on your importance, you're placed in a different screen, just the same as a cinema screen in a normal cinema because it is a normal cinema most of the time. So I assume all the actors and the people who worked on the film and all their families were in like the main screen and then there were various other screens with less important people. We were in screen nine which was right at the top. I think we had to go up maybe four levels and at every corner at the top and bottom of every escalator there was a steward asking us to show our little tickets so that they could direct us. There were just so many of them. It felt like it was going on forever. <laughs> Once we were in the screening room, they were screening the red carpet on the cinema screen. So we got to see all the same like interviews and everything that everybody else was seeing just because we were in a separate room. We weren't like missing out on anything. It just meant we weren't breathing the same air as celebrities, that's all. So there's another bit of juicy gossip for you. When you see YouTubers posting on Instagram and stuff about the premieres they're going to and looking all fancy and you like just think they're winning at life, yeah, they probably are winning at life, but they aren't necessarily in the same room as the actual important people. When we came up the last set of escalators, we uh, saw Tom Scar coming out the toilets as I was going into the toilets. Glamorous. And he was in the same screening room as us. I didn't see anyone else I recognised in there. The cinema seats and everything were really nice as well. So there was a lot of leg room. There were like proper leather seats. Basically the premium seats you pay extra for at a normal cinema. We also got provided with refreshments. So every seat had a packet of pop chips, which are like crisp things and a bottle of water, which I really appreciated because we were supposed to be going to Chipotle. We didn't get to because we kind of got ambushed into going to this premiere. So I was pretty hungry and pretty thirsty. There was also a bar at the front of the room that was not free. I don't know how much stuff cost, but I just saw we accept these payments. So I did not go and investigate. I was properly freeloading as much as possible that day. Not even intentionally, but I was not prepared to be going to a premiere, so I was not going to be paying for premiere price drinks. It's just such a cool experience and I was just in shock for about basically the whole film. I couldn't really concentrate much because I was just thinking this is so weird, like why me? Only two days before this, I had reached 5,000 subscribers and I know compared to everybody else in that room, that's not many subscribers, but to me that's huge, that's absolutely massive and it was only I mean, only 4,000 like, like a month or so ago so thank you all so 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 much for that not many people with 5,000 subscribers can say that they get to go to film premieres with other like proper established youtubers I know that wasn't the reason I got in but I just kind of savored that moment because that hasn't happened to a lot of people and it was just kind of fate that it was me who was chosen as someone who basically does the same job as the people in that room but doesn't get paid for it. I got sort of an industry insight into what actually goes down, more just how things worked really. I mean, practicalities are things like how many screens there were and the fact that you do not get a free bar, but you do get a free snack. The film itself was really good. Like I said, it's not really my kind of thing usually. It didn't look like something I'd enjoy, but I did like the kind of color scheme that they were going for. I really appreciated that. It was like blue and purple and kind of futuristic. It was about virtual reality and it was basically like being in a video game and they, there was a quest that they had to complete. If you like gaming YouTubers then it's basically the same thing but in a lot higher quality. So that was my exciting Monday night. It finished about half nine so we still had time to see the end half of TRC and in the end half of the set they played all the songs that I liked so best of both worlds and the borderline's just around the corner from Leicester Square as well so I think I would have been a bit upset if I hadn't got to see TRC but how often do you get surprise tickets to a premiere just because you're standing on a wall and you happen to be in the right place at the right time. Not very often. It's a really exciting story to tell and I am really grateful and I had a great time. But I do want to talk a little bit about why it made me feel so good because I was sitting in the film and thinking a lot of positive thoughts and thinking how amazing this was and how kind of special I felt. And while I was thinking that I was also thinking about the concept of being special and being important because I wasn't there for my own merit I was just there because a stranger handed me some tickets but it still kind of boosted my mood and made me feel like I 
was important. I don't mean that in a big headed way. I was just surrounded by a lot of fancy things and a lot of fancy people and it just made me feel good. But it just doesn't sit right with me that just because you're a certain person in a certain job or if you get handed tickets by a stranger that you get to feel kind of elite and better than other people and more special. And it's not in a kind of derogatory way to other people, not that you're looking down on others, but that you're lifting yourself up. I mean, that's great. Great that you can feel good about yourself. When you actually look at the concept, it's like, oh look, I'm surrounded by famous people, so I am important and I'm successful. And that just, that just feels wrong to me. <laughs> I guess it just made me kind of examine the concept of celebrity and fame, kind of pick it apart and realize that it doesn't really mean much. I think essentially it creates more of a divide between creators and viewers and boosts people's egos, but not in a way that they made something good or they made someone feel good or they changed someone's perception on something, but just the fact that they're more important than other people. Maybe once I've gathered my thoughts more, I'll make a video on this topic properly. I don't know, maybe not. That was my little story time of my exciting Monday night at a film premiere. I also have another piece of exciting life news, which I am so excited to share with you. And it's happening at nine o'clock today. It is currently 8.57. Once it happens, I'll make a video on it. Oh, I am so excited. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you very soon.